So um, in the areas where you're investing, so you're, you actually live in um, uh, Boise, Idaho, right? Correct. Uh, is all of your investing right around that area or do you invest uh, outside of that market? Um, I, I try to just invest here. Um, I am not against opportunity in other places, especially building portfolios. Uh, the home price here for the amount that money pe that people can make and then what their rent would be is, is pretty high, the cap that they're buying at. And so, you know, if a big hundred unit or something comes up in Mississippi, I, I don't have a problem going there to do that. But I, I keep most of my I coach some people out of Utah and some stuff like that. But I, I try to keep most of my stuff market specific to Boise. We're busy gotcha. enough here. I don't need to be spread out. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, let's talk about finding deals. Uh, would you agree or not agree that it's more challenging to find motivated sellers now than say it was a couple of years ago? Yes. And I, and I got the same thing here. I mean, you've, you know, in, in Eastern North Carolina, like, you know, well, for years I haven't relied on the multiple listing service to find a deal, right? Uh, the best deals are typically not on the market, what we call off market houses, but um, there's no inventory. And as soon as a house actually is put in the multiple listing service, it's sold. So um, I am now having to, uh, employ multiple, and I always have, but even more so multiple marketing channels to find the deals. So with that, in, and you mentioned a few moments ago that, you know, you get a lot of leads just through networking and, you know, people know you and that type of thing. But as far as consistent marketing outside of networking, uh, what would you say is working the best these days, uh, either for you or for some of your friends and colleagues? Well, first it comes down to offers out. How many offers out are you making? And I would argue I'll sit with some of the best wholesalers in the country. And one of the commonalities is they write more offers than the rest of people. Um, and I always write a lot of offers. And so we, we will tag the MLS too. Uh, but when we do, we put out 10, 20 offers. You know, uh, we search for different criteria. We search for how many days on market. If it's on the market for 20 in a hot market, there's something going on there. Um, and so we have all those, but I, I just think that people get a little lackadaisical with, you know, you get a 20 K assignment and then a 30 K assignment. Now you got 50 grand in the bank and you take the foot off the gas on, or you might get picky or whatever the case is, but we're just consistently putting offers out. I mean, I probably write, I probably, I had, I had a metric that I followed that I wanted to put 10 off, 10 offers out a week. Um, for a long time. And I, I have, I haven't necessarily done that, but I bet you, I still hit about 10 offers a week. Um, and you know, the other thing that I think is important is to know the, your buyer's list and to know what you can offer in your buyer's list. So the market is more markets, right? The two to $300 market is different than the three to five and the three to five is different than the six to nine. And the million dollar market is a lot different than those. And so most of your people are fishing out of that 500 and lower market, 600 and lower. And this, these are obviously my prices, right? In Boise. But I, when, when everyone was hunting down there, I trained up a couple of my students to do the luxury homes because that's what we do. And now we buy them in the million dollar inventory. Well, there's a lot of inventory in the million dollar houses. Most people just don't know what they're going to do. So they don't list with the agent. I would say about 70% of the offers that we make in the million dollar market have already thought about selling their home and the motivations there to sell, but they just haven't done it yet. They might've already called an agent and the agents already came out there and gave them a price and they just haven't listed it yet. So we get a lot of pocket deals that way where all the luxury agents that deal in the million dollar market and up know that I buy those and they know that they also have buyers in the same thing. So we have a place here called the Mesa and it overlooks all of Boise. And I, I take that place over. I, I love it up there. And so they know that if I do a house up there, they can sell it for top dollar to one of their buyers. So their buyer might be interested in that area, but that old unrenovated house that the person's debating whether they're selling isn't the house for them yet. So that agent now calls them and say, Hey, well, what if I could get you cash 
I have a buyer that loves this neighborhood. What if I could get you cash? He'll give you a post possession. So he'll let you rent it out for the next 30 days, 45 days, whatever it takes uh, while you're moving your stuff. And, uh, and, and then he'll just give you the cash, no inspections. And so, so we do that a lot and I get, I get some of the best inventory in those real high price point items. So I, my advice to some people is just, you might have to switch pawns every now and then. Um, but there's a good amount of flippers that will love houses in, in that price point. Um, so you just kind of switch your buyer pool. 